All right, fellas. Here we go. It's time for part 34 of Christian Comprehensive History. Now, just so you guys know, uh, for those of you wondering, obviously last episode, we just kind of didn't. <laughs> we just kind of didn't. Uh, we didn't like it. All right. I didn't I didn't particularly care for it. It was just it was pretty bad. Um, so I put like a very short recap, but now we're going to get into it. Hopefully it's not just full of just ridiculous, you know, racist BS. So. What made what him made this, him this way? Her, bro. Stop being transphobic. What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? I don't know. This is the story of Chris Chan. Incredible. Exciting. Christian Weston Chandler here. On Thanksgiving, 2010, after writing to Christian several strongly worded emails criticizing him, Dyke sent him a short, simple greeting asking about how he spent his holiday. He wrote back, saying that he had a pleasant Thanksgiving, and that he disapproved of her way of telling the truth which hurt him, stating Dang, that she was ex- If I was Sorry. a vampire, uh, I would go back in time to make insane love to my <laughs> old baseball coach. That would be so lit that I wow. would go insane and jump up and down. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. His hurtful truth level. In response, Jackie sent a lengthy email rebutting his claims of not being egotistical and selfish, and complained about his negative opinions concerning socializing over the internet, when he made no effort in making friends in real life. You've just written a large email telling me that you basically want to forget about me because email is inconvenient and because I don't kiss your ass enough. Once again, sterling display of reciprocity you show there, Chris. Listen, man, how are you going to have an email girlfriend? You know what I mean? Like, you're going to do an email girlfriend for this long? I would be sick of it, too. Maybe Chris is just being like, you know what? You're probably fake, and I'm just a... It sounds more like Chris is trying to strong-arm this person into being like, all right, we can get off of emailing, and I can, I'll can, i actually, like, message you on the phone or something or talk to you live, uh, blah, blah, blah. Because it's easy to, like, fake emotions through, um, you know... This, this means that he's doing it through, or this per that they, I'm pretty sure it seems like it's Casey. I don't really know though. This person is doing it through. So they're just like, I, I, if anything, you know, I'm almost proud of Chris for establishing or attempting to establish boundaries. Just saying. Everyone is supposed to be nice and sympathetic to you, but you don't care what others think or feel or need. So anyway, if you want to go your whole life without having to face the truth about yourself, that's fine. Just accept that you won't be respected as an adult and that you won't be getting a girlfriend or sex ever. After this well, hour exchange, you're not you're not, you're not going to get any sex if you you're not you're not going to get any sex if you uh, if you're doing it through an email either. So it's not like this is necessarily the most helpful thing. So there was a two week gap in communications between Chris and Jackie until December seventh, when she wrote a brief email asking how he was getting along and whether he had made any progress in socializing in real life or if he was still sitting at home playing video games all day. Chris sent her a reply within twenty minutes. Hey, you know what's so interesting? All Chris had to do was be born like 10 years later, maybe not even, and he would have been perfectly fine when getting tons of socialization through online video games, which has become more and more popular lately. You know what I mean? Or, like, or it's very popular now. But like back then, it was, for the most part, I think, like, there, wasn't, there wasn't a super big like online community. Maybe that's not necessarily 100% true. We could see people play World of Warcraft. Um, <laughs> but I'm just saying, man. Hey, Jackie, what he could have been a Fortniteer, playing Fortnite, streaming. Oh my God, could you imagine a world where Chris Chan streams? That would be insane, bro. Well, currently, I'm not making much progress in making new friends, but I have been going out more. I'm still frozen and clammed up in mass public. And for your information, Same. I said socializing on the internet was bad, not the whole internet in general. Yet while I do sometimes play on PS Home, a social gaming network, I still am frozen in that public setting with my avatar. And I'm Could you imagine Chris Chan in VR? That would be nuts. <laughs> I'll just say it, it'd be fucking crazy. Mainly focus on the single player exploring and play. How are things with you and Lars? Stay safe and well. Christian. Jackie informed him that Lars was still in addiction counseling, but was doing well, and suggested that Chris should return to the social media site mm. Facebook to socialize by joining a group, since it was apparently near impossible for trolls to bother him there. No, yeah, After I'm this sure. correspondence was another break in emails until Jackie wrote to him again on December 19th, asking about his current situation. After not getting a reply, she sent him two emails a couple of days later, sarcastically implying that she thought that he was too busy socializing to respond to her. She then sent him a link to the online- You can't- you can't be sarcastic to somebody with autism, okay? This doesn't work out. I've tried before. I tried dating a girl with autism. It, 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 I, I'm a very sarcastic person. It just doesn't go particularly well. 
Um, I uh, it, it was awkward. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say, it was very awkward. Online dating website, We Waited, which catered to virgins who sought other virgins. Since the site had a very strict identity confirmation process, Jackie said that there would be no way for trolls to set up a fake account on it. The following day, Chris finally replied, stating that he still had trouble socializing in real life. In addition, he told her that his avatar on PlayStation Home was being followed by trolls. Uh, dude, a Sonic 2 VR model? You're on to something, dude. You are on to something. He added that for Christmas, he wished that both the Quickie and Encyclopedia Dramatica completely disappear so then he wouldn't be portrayed as a monster anymore. That's so normal though, dude. Like, listen, that, dude, that's so true. Like, listen, Christian is a flawed person like everybody else. But it, it's a real thing where, like, his entire internet history is portrayed um, to a point where, like, if you Google, like, if you're, if you, honestly, if you're an employer, right, especially, like, you know, nowadays things are getting better for people with disabilities, but, like, let's say you're an employer and you're a, a very new thing to do or a very common thing to do. I think they've been doing it for, for a while. <clears throat> is to Google the person that you're interviewing. You know, what's the internet history? Could have come up with nothing, could have come up with something. Imagine you Google Quist, uh, Quistin, Christian Weston Chandler, and like this guy's entire online persona pops up. He, it's going to be impossible for him to get a job at that point. You know what I mean? Like, imagine every one of your mistakes followed you for your entire life. That's insane, dude. We've all made so many mistakes growing up, and then you learn from them, and it's like, okay, you know, you're better off. But Chris can't do that. You know, Chris gets put into a spot where, like, he, he can't even, like, he just can't do that, you know? Hire him on the spot. Yeah, that's what I would do, personally. <laughs> Christmas of 2010 came and went without anything of note occurring. By the start of January 2011, organized trolling efforts. Oh, are you telling me that they didn't take the wiki down? Oh my god, I was expecting them to do that. These are such nice people. It's had all ceased. However, trolls continued to observe and record Christian's video game spending and playing habits via his online gaming profiles, oh my god. noting that he spent a considerable amount of time playing DC Universe Online and Little Big Planet too. Really, Chris played DC Universe? I I used to be like a really big MMO player. Um, and I've tried like a lot of different MMOs and I tried playing. It was actually fun, but like, I don't know. I just kind of fell out of it. Um, like, I'm, I guess I'm not surprised that Chris plays, played DC Universe online. <laughs> also, during the first month of the year, Chris planned to attend the music and gaming festival MacFest in Alexandria, okay. Virginia, and meet up with someone who was possibly named Rebecca, an online gal pal portrayed by the same troll who had previously played the parts of Emily and Kim. Do you think it's Rebecca Black or Rebecca Sugar? from Steven Universe. Which one do you think it is? Right? Because they all like trans people, so I imagine it's, it's gotta be one. <laughs> gotta be one of them, right? Tim Wilson. On January 15th, he wrote a lengthy email to her, letting her know that he had to cancel his plans because he was pressured to do so by his parents. That's Yesterday, sad. in a final well, childish attempt... Well, it's, I say it's sad, but it was probably a troll anyway, so... ...gave my mom and dad the autistic treatment. Silent, deaf, and no eye contact. I'm sorry, I gave my parents the autistic treatment. <laughs> It's just so funny because <laughs> <Give me a sec. laughs> it's very funny to me because it's actually kind of a, it's a very human thing to do to uh, fundamentally lean into some kind of a, we'll say disability or some kind of thing, right? So like for people who aren't like disabled, for instance, and I, I don't do it with like my ADHD or anything. Um, actually, maybe I do because I can't find things for my life. So I'm at a point now where I can't find things like even in front of my face. It's crazy. So uh, what I do is I just my 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 wife says, look for this and I sometimes I look sometimes I don't I'm just ah, I can't do it I um you know um um I can't do it I can't find it you know what I mean maybe that's an ADHD thing I don't know but a lot of people like you know when like for instance here's something you identify with when you're sick oh I'm feeling a little sick oh and maybe you could do a little more but you know maybe you have somebody that'll do it for you so you have like a little, little bit of an excuse you shouldn't lean too hard into those but it's kind of funny because here's like I gave them autistic trust so I, I I really dialed up the autism. I didn't want. I wanted to get my way, so I re I became extra autistic. You know, I'm I'm super autistic right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just funny to me. <laughs> so, which wrecked a family outing to country cooking that afternoon. After getting back home, she came up to my room and, in an angry, sad tone, told me sarcastically, "Go on your trip, but at least take two blankets with you to keep warm." Then she left crying. Sarcastic? Why was that sarcastic? Chris, you don't know what sarcasm is. Okay, stop. All right. Then my father came in a few minutes later, telling me of us three bang a hole and what would happen if one leaves, and informed me that due to the crap on the internet against and about me from the trolls and what I uploaded, as well as my real events between PBCC, the mall, the cops, and all that shit, plus being psychologically matched to the high school and college dropout who shot the people in Arizona, and the great number of people locally and worldwide. 
Bro, what what is happening right now? I'm gonna die. Fuck. What? Being psychologically matched to 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 the shoot to a shooter? What? I mean, I, what what does that mean? I mean, I get that uh, the parents are like apprehensive about him going out because of trolls, but what? What the what the fuck? Who hates Trash, and loathes sure, me? Sure. Legally, I am a sitting duck. Auntie told me of mom saying she was going to pack up and leave the house. Then I ran downstairs, finding her on the couch. She was so miserable and sad. She talked of wanting to die. You don't even have to change my clothes. You can just bury me in what I have on. I was so sad and crying and so sorry for the way I misbehaved. We hugged and made up a bit. Then I went back upstairs and told... What the fuck? Alright, that seems uh, very manipulative. I okay, well, this is... Okay. I mean, listen, I understand wanting to protect Chris from getting trolled. Maybe that's what Barbara was trying to do. But it's possible that we're being introduced to a very uh, a, an interesting pattern of manipulation, which is interesting because before we were talking about how like uh, like oh Chris is, like, turns up the torrent. We made a joke about turning up the autism, um, but like really like kind of leaning into the autism thing argument to try to get what they want, which is some people some people do that you know every once in a while when it comes to some stuff. But you shouldn't really do fundamentally, um, it's, you know. But like, if that be where did you know the question comes? Like, where did he learn that behavior? It sounds like here is the mother. And maybe I'm reaching. Maybe I'm going a little too far into that. But oh my god! Dad, she was lying on the couch. Then I opened my DSI's notebook app and drew up a three-circle pyramid diagram of me, mom, and dad, analyzing all three aspects. And I felt more sad. I saved the app, turned the handheld off, turned off the TV grabbed my quilt, wrapping it around my head, and I sat up to my scrunched sleep position on the couch. But I did not go to sleep. I cried and cried some more, which led me to move to my bed, still with quilt on my head. I laid face down into my pillows and cried a lot more. I felt very miserable and realizing that at this point, my only reason for being was to keep this falling apart family together. And even wow. worse, I lied to you in the email I sent to you post-father and pre-notebook writing. I called up Rocky and talked to her about the situation because I needed someone to talk to immediately, pre-quilt. I felt worse than shit. A few minutes later, mom calls me on my cell to check on me. I tell her how miserable I was. She came upstairs. I was on the bed, in fetus position, with quilt on my head. I did not feel like showing my face. She sat by my side, rubbed my back with one hand in comforting attempt, confiding in me moments of similar events that happened to her. I eventually sat up with her, and we shared a good, long cry with tissues. Then we went up to Walmart with for tissues. groceries at about 8. After now that's the best, dude. Walmart is unironically incredible. I might go to Walmart today just for the fun of it. Going to Walmart for fun is, is, a, is a very, it's a very American activity. It's American culture. Finishing our cry and recovering. Points are, my family and I do not have any friends and outside family to depend on. Mom and dad's relatives gave us constant cold shoulders, thinking they're royalty, when really they're no better off. And any friends were either dead, left behind in Midlothian, or alive and giving us cold shoulders too. They will never feel at ease with me going anywhere more distance away than Charlottesville or Rutgersville. Not unless they actually know and have met in person any people of my acquaintance, including you, I am very sorry. Oh, did they call me N-word? What the fuck was that bleep? What the hell? And that the Dissinaton, unless they are sure it is okay and safe for me to be around or stay at, I'm still a legally sitting duck. Troll set up paranoid and such. And also, mom treated me to half payment of a copy of DC Universe Online to make up for not allowing me to go. Even after that, I still feel low as shit. I'm You know, it's interesting. With how manipulative the mom potentially is, I wonder if these events are actually true or if he's making these events, he's, he's exaggerating to make it seem more justified as to why he's not going to the event. You know what I mean? Um, I wonder. I'm so sorry to you for lying to you about the recent sickness and making destined to fail promises. But family does come first, and it does say in the commandments and Bible to honor thy mother and father. And I must further insist on you and my parents meeting in person and talking in good faith and confidence. That's a completely fair thing though. Chris getting trolled so much, of course. That would be uh, to me. That uh, makes sense. If anything, this is this is what needs to happen. We've been saying this for how long? Like there needs to be like the parents need to kind of be like, "Yo, what are you doing?" Like this is you know, th this is what needs to happen. There need there should be, um, um like he's getting trolled so much and he's finally learning. Like yeah, good, <laughs> finally. After this email, Chris withdrew himself even more and failed to pick up incoming phone calls from supposed gal pals out of shame and also out of fear of talking to possible trolls. On January 23rd, he wrote an email to another gal pal who was portrayed by the same troll, apologizing for not talking with her over the phone. He explained that he was still feeling miserable over his scrapped travel plans and was falling asleep and waking up very early. 
He added、mm. that he recently volunteered at his church, which was at the time providing accommodation to the homeless as part of the Paysum seasonal homeless shelter program. He loaned、nice. out his Sega Dreamcast game console for the evening so that the homeless could play it. He also. <laughs> oh, that's nice, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's nice. It's just funny. Yeah, I'm almost. Oh, you know what we could do? Play Sega Dreamcast for today. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> But it's, it's still a nice gesture. It's just funny. Helped serve food to them. Chris told the gal pal that he would have volunteered again the following day, but couldn't bring himself to go there again due to his depression and extensive gameplay of、wow. Little Big Planet 2. Due to his depression and Little Big Planet 2. I can identify with that. You know? Yeah, I'm depressed and I'm also. I mean, like, in all honesty, I guess I can, because, like, when I get depressed, dude, when I get a little bit depressed, I'll just, like, sit on my phone and I will just,、uh, like, I'll just play, like, phone games, you know? Like, I won't even, I won't want to get out of bed. I just play phone games. I don't play, like, anything, you know what I mean? I guess that's like my coping mechanism. Yeah,、so. He noted that the game was encouraging him to think creatively again, coming up with new storyline ideas for his Sonic、oh, 2 characters in the、good. form of playable levels in the game.、Okay. Nevertheless, he remains doubtful of being worthy of talking with Little Big Planet Chew, right? Not bad. With her over the phone for the time being. In early February, Chris got a urinary tract infection, causing、Ow. him many restless nights. I'm surprised he didn't get one sooner, considering he talked about how he doesn't really shower. So,、okay. During this time, he treated himself with antibiotics prescribed by his doctor while being forced to stay at home. He mentioned in an email that his mother was quite helpful to him, who on at least one occasion、nice. brought him cartons of orange juice and chocolate soy milk to make him feel better. Chocolate, what? Soy milk? You're talking about bean juice? Soybean juice? There's no, there's no such thing as soy milk, okay? It's soybean juice. Get the hell out of here with that weak ass shit. What the fuck? When he felt healthier, Chris continued to work on his Little Big Planet levels, which、okay. included a series of movie like animation levels, talking about his life and autism, for which he would provide a narration track. On February 9th,、Great. he completed、Can't、his、wait. animation showcasing his collector's case system on Little Big Planet 2. Hello, and welcome to the tutorial of the collector's case in Little Big Planet. Originally created by Christian Weston Chandler, I'm your host, Sonic Hugh, the Electric Cage of Pokemon. <laughs> and today we are going、Ridiculous. to tour the collector's case, which was originally created in Little Big Planet and now being revamped in Little Big Planet 2. If you recall the arcade level in Little Big Planet 2, which is the first level in the final zone of the game, you will notice the arcade machine, where if you play the mini games a little bit, you would unlock a prize, which is dropped on the top of the machine. Why do I feel like、I've, we've watched this already? Was this at the beginning of it too? It feels so like,、uh, I feel like we've watched this. Am I wrong? That's essentially called a drawer system. And I use that technology similarly here in the LBT Little Big Planet 2 version of the collector's case. Okay. Deja vu, anyone? <laughs> Before we go up, we're talking about the individual parts. Dissolve parts, dissolve shells. Put your number of bowls behind these, and you can drop them down all at once. You can either、uh, put the bowls in the top. Or remove the front temporarily by moving it forward and then sticking it back after you put the bubbles in place. One bubble for each square. Bro, you know, it's crazy, man. Like, if there, you, there's so, no offense, there's so many autistic people, YouTube creators that don't show their face on the internet and are, are so successful. <laughs> And I'm not trying to be rude, but Chris, Chris literally was born in the wrong generation. He could have been very successful doing the things that he was doing now. And people would actually pick up on him and be like, wow, I like this. I mean, there's so many people that could do this stuff already. Most of them are Minecraft YouTubers or they play Sonic the Hedgehog.、Uh, that's all it would have been. That's all it would have been, man. Like, what, a, what a missed opportunity. And plus, Chris created the first Let's Play. I mean, Chris is a revolutionary. Like, yeah, he, he, he violated his mom sexually, of course. I mean, that's not good, but. That's fucked up. I'm sorry. No, but、um, mm. he's done some shit. But I mean, a lot of that social conditioning, I mean, this is a whole conversation to have.、Um, but, like, they really could have been a successful person if they weren't relentlessly bullied. And honestly, without being relentlessly bullied, they probably wouldn't have done the horrible things that they've done. Being completely isolated, only having, like, your mother to turn to. Do you know how much that would fuck you up? It's really fucked, man. It's fucked up shit. The shelves here made up with a thin layer on the front, a thin layer on the back, and an inner outward switch, which you,、uh, switch is obvious right there. Check your tutorial on that. Okay, so we are in the boxes. Yes, we got to look at the boxes. Yes, press button. Any button? Is it a key? Pull the lever. Anything you want. It's your box. Put your box together. Hold with it. Swing around. Collect the bubbles. Bubbles all down. You miss it. Make them drop, drop them as you go. Okay. So, anyway,、uh, that's essentially it for the、uh, stuff. So, yeah. 
You can also back you can also back these up onto your hard drive or remote from the internet. Do what you want. Yay! So I'll get to the alert a little later of this video, my friend. Everybody have a safe day! Enjoy yourselves and neglect the cases I put together for you. Yay! On February 13th. Christian finished his six-part so-called autism tutorial, a selection of animation-based levels. In little <laughs> oh, it's autism tutorial. Sorry. <laughs> well, you know what's interesting though is that we've we've discovered Christian has created something else, an additional thing. He's created um, fake autism. Now, um, let me explain that. TikTok, fake TikTok autism. Let me explain. While Chris does seem to have actual diagnosed autism. What he also did is he used that experience to basically write the manual on how to appear autistic. That's what it sounds like. And so in doing that, <clears throat> if you really think about it, Chris gave people the um, the blueprints to fake autism on TikTok. Explain how I'm wrong. Right? Explain it. Big Planet 2, in which he talks about autism and his personal experiences with the condition. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Christian Winston Chandler, alias Christopher, and I am autistic. I functionally autistic. In this animation, with Wikipedia facts and book diagrams, and in my own words and opinions, we will look into autism. Why it is possible causes. Bro, tell me that this 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 series wouldn't have hit. Tell me that this would not have hit. It would have hit. <clears throat> It would it would have hit like so hard. All right, this is insane. Like people would have been all over this. Somebody using the little big planet to axe them out. That's what people basically. It's VTubers. Is that what they call them? VTubers. They already do that. This is crazy. And treatments and cures, and how we autistics should be treated. We autistics. And respected in real life social situations. Wow. Oh, okay. I disagree. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Autism. What is it? In a nutshell. It is a malfunction in the neural development that impairs social interactions, communication, and restricted or repetitive behaviors. Okay. But facts also state that autism occurs pre-birth, sadly, in mutated genetics within the chromosomes. Is it all, is it, is autism like fully like pre-birth? Is it? Wow. Okay. Which can happen when a pregnant mother smokes. Wait. Okay, so it's not just biological. It's also apparently autism can manifest itself like in the womb as well. Okay. Binges, take dr takes drugs, or certain meds. I mean, I, I should probably be a little careful about taking, uh, you know, Christian's word as a fact, but um, okay. And other. We're, we're, we're learning. We're learning, guys. We're learning about autism. Non or real environmental factors, such as car exhaust. Ladies, get off the drugs now. Another factor lies in the father's age upon child conception. The mother's age is not a factor here. Dude. That's just, I just don't believe that. I, I wouldn't doubt the father's age has an, has an impact as well. Maybe their swimmers are a little messed up. But the mother's age absolutely has a factor. There's no way that you, there's no way that the mother's age isn't a factor. Mm -hmm. There's just no way. Both both would be a factor. The, the mother, probably the mother and father's age, probably both their weight, potentially medications that they're on. 100%. So I was reading a study that said like metformin has a chance to do some, holy fuck, I got a lot of stuff out of this, uh, has a chance to like, you know, cause some kind of complication. Oh yeah, I would imagine the father has less impact than the mother. Now that might not be true, but like there's no, dude, how's this out of bounds, whatever. There's just no way that the father doesn't have an impact. That's what I heard. Maybe am I mishearing it? Have your children before like 40 or 50. You should have your children way before 40 or 50. You probably have your children in your 20s, to be honest with you, if you want to like optimize it. Common symptoms of autism include and should be observed to notice little to no eye contact, malcommunication with delayed babbling. Maybe you're just ugly. Just That's why I don't make eye contact because you're ugly. <laughs> unusual gestures, low responsiveness. Try calling their name. In that young age, they seldom respond if they oh. have autism. As well as unsynced atypical vocal patterns. They also will have lack of intuition of other people lack of attention to social stimuli, and little to no smiling. Wow. A controversy began when they blamed mercury and MMR vaccines, but it was removed from all vaccines in early 2000, and yet the autism rate still grew over the decade. I wonder why, I mean, honestly, I feel like one of the reasons why is probably unhealthy eating habits and people having kids way later. Like, the, the, Chris's parents had their kids way late. 
Uh, women over age 40 are 51% more likely to, uh, than women 29 to 30, uh, 25 to 39 to have child with autism. Yeah. Same thing like Down syndrome. Um, <clears throat> what the fuck was I saying? You guys distracted me. Um, fuck, what was I saying? What was I saying there? I was making a point about something and then I just like lost my thought. Um, oh, yeah, vaccine stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, like I was saying, I think that a big reason is because people are eating less healthy and they're also having kids later. And it's like in general, like in Western countries, like people, it, it tends to be associated with money. People like um, they don't, for some reason, they don't want to have kids, whether it's um, because the, of like the economic stressors or because they're comfortable having money. They don't want to deal with the kids or anything or uh, they have kids late because they're focusing on their careers first. There's so many different reasons why these things are happening. It's It's crazy. Going back to what you can do for your autistic child, you can do a number of things, but course, the most important thing is to positively, emotionally encourage them. Okay. And try and give them hugs anyway, even if they don't want it. Well. Okay, I guess. I guess can you have to? I guess you'd have to. If is it like a symptom of autism to not like hugs? I don't know. They will feel the love eventually, because I know I have. My mom never stopped hugging me. Okay. You can, and of course, there's also therapy psychiatry and special autism places special I highly autism encourage. Places. special autism places like GameStop yeah that's <laughs> I'm sorry making a lot of jokes today mainstreaming them letting them be normal letting them try to fit in with the normal places like high like high school and middle school I fit in perfectly after I I so did well Chris that's not true bullies are relentless teach your kids even if you don't have an autistic kid or a kid with autism teach them to be more accepting of people with disabilities but never ever send them to a mental institution. It's just wrong. It's a dark, evil place. Wow. I was almost forced in there once, but my parents would not have it. Oh, wow. okay. Back in my teenage years at Manchester High School of Midlothian, Virginia. Wow, he put a lot of work into this. See, this is what I'm talking about. This would have been like a fucking renowned video on YouTube if if Chris didn't have all the other negative stuff. Chris could have a very successful, like, or could have, but, you know, the. The, the wiki kind of exists, you know? I really felt emotionally rich. Because Imagine that wiki didn't exist and Chris could change to like a different career path, like creating these types of videos. Um, in all honesty, like really think about that. Chris may not have been so fucking crazy. But instead, even if he tries to make a video, he gets trolled in the comments. And there's sometimes where people will go into the comments and they're like, what's being said in here? And then they'll, they'll, they'll collect their idea of a person based on what the, com what the comments are saying. I had a great number of friends. The closest and majority of were some. You came to Papa after his cameo in a Turkey Tom video. Which Turkey Tom video? Has he made one recently? I thought that the, I'm pretty sure like that was a while ago. No, which video are you talking about? Some sweet girls. My circle of gal pals was the best asset and blessing anyone could ever ask for. They understood me, and I understood them. We appreciate each other. We hung out, conversed. The one from John Swan a while ago. Oh, I didn't even know I was in a John Swan Turkey Tom video. Or maybe I'm just an idiot. Oh, maybe I... W oh, I know. Okay, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. When John Swan said, like, the commentary community is dying or something, right? And hung out yeah, between within our classes. Those are the best of times. Pretty much. And even I even had a high school sweetheart like most would. And the quality throughout was great. Wow. And would be most appreciated by any person, autistic or not. Sadly, though... About my high school years, of which I can only complain about, were two things, and I did not realize these till after I graduated. I actually want to realize mid-graduation, but after graduation, I realized that I was naive on the subject of dating throughout high school. The no, not you, Chris. What? Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember if Chris knows that his father paid girls to be his friend. How sad is that, dude? Holy moly. That's so sad. How many likes can we get for how sad that is? The mandatory sexual education class is good for after date number three and so, but how do we even get to date number one? That's my question. I really would appreciate the mandatory dating education class. You know what, though? Like, there's a couple of different things that would help Chris date. One of them is probably not being trolled. But more than that, um, a, a higher tolerance for other people with intellectual disabilities would really benefit Chris because it seems like there's a trend of Chris not really... Um, you know, there seems to be a, a, a trend of Chris 
not liking people. He calls them slow in the minds. And if you listen to the way that he talks, he's very proud of the fact that he's a high functioning uh, autistic person, which suggests to me that he like looks down on people that are lower functioning or maybe I, I don't know about equally functioning though. I wonder if he looks down on them. So um, there, that there's, there's something there uh, to, to have a conversation about more acceptability of what people with autism, uh, maybe even down syndrome as well. I don't know to date somebody with down. They girls with down syndrome have fat asses. So listen, like, um, probably like a better availability, <laughs> a better availability of uh, of being able to um, better like dating availability for people with like autism or with like disabilities that would probably help a lot. I would also say though that. If you guys watch Autism on the Spectrum, there was this one girl. She kept talking about how she was uh, somebody who did animation. She ran an animation company, et cetera, et cetera. And she was very high standard. But fundamentally, there are some people who are on the spectrum who struggle a lot. One of the things she said like, kind of resonated with me. It stuck out to me, rather. Where she talked about how she has a difficulty finding people because she's very high functioning. And so she can't really identify with low functioning people. But she also can't really identify with people without autism because she's still considered too weird to them. And it's like a whole conversation about like there's potentially because of Chris's possibly unique function, like uh, functionality where he falls on the spectrum. It can be really difficult to find people that are, are like him. Also a couple in the fact that people are girls and boys with, uh, with I think that people with autism, whether they're girls and boys with autism, that manifest differently. She was hot. Yeah, she was. Um, between all those factors, like it's probably sets Chris up for for his failure. Also, he doesn't shower. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of there's a lot of things here. There's a lot of things here. You're autistic and you it sucks. Yeah, I feel that, man. I, I get what you're saying, brother. As uh, you know, keep on keeping on. You know what I mean? Just keep living your truth. Be confident in it. That's the best you could really do, and somebody will identify with that truth. You know what I mean? Alongside sexual education, also abstinence is a joke. The Virgin Breaker needs to happen before adulthood arrives. <laughs> this is awesome. Bro, this is so based. Because being an adult virgin sucks. True. Even for us autistics, and mentally challenged. Autistics. Verbiage and the second off. thing about my high school years that I could uh, with the plain about is my high school graduation ceremony. It was a very depressing day. It was raining. It was dark. It was dreary. I love days like that. It's so funny that that's depressing to Chris. I love that kind of stuff. I love. The, oh, I'm gonna die. Fuck! I was doing so well. I just I didn't see it. I'm in my boomer eyes. I love it when it rains, man. It's it's incredible. I don't know. That's just me, I guess. Anyway, I went up and got my diploma, and uh, I did not shake anybody's hand. Damn. I mean, there were important people there. I did not shake anybody's hand. I just grabbed my. The mayor was there. I don't know. Diploma cried and ran out the stage. Wow, and that's so really sad. I sat at a table by myself for a little while. Then wow. my best gal pal Tip met up with me and uh, she made me feel a little better. Which is what you do, Chris. I'd love to uh, see her again. At least hang out for a little while. You kiss her on the lips? My high school years were the best and most emotionally encouraging for me. But after graduation in 2000 and moving back to Lane Rockersville, it was all downhill for me. It's so interesting because high <sighs> It's just so interesting. I think it's because like his gal pals, so to speak, like move, were moving on and stuff. His friends were moving on. It's it's so I don't know. He was already struggling to find friends. Like that was the only. It's so crazy that the most people I feel like have a somewhat negative. Like I had a fairly like I wouldn't I wouldn't say, call it a positive experience in high school. High school's a little sussy, you know. I feel like it's just like an environment, like a really shitty environment. Um, it's interesting that Chris had a positive one, even though he was bullied for having autism. I wonder if he just didn't realize he was getting bullied for it. Or maybe his father's thing of paying people to be friends worked. His father probably just doesn't have enough money to pay people now to be his friend, you know? My adult years suck, and I'm soon to turn 29. Wow. I left my heart back at Manchester High in Midlothian. I, gra I also graduated from Piedmont Virginia Community College with a uh, degree in computer a drafting and design, but that, and that graduation went better for me. Because I did not have so many, fr I did not have many friends back there, and plus, Marilyn Walsh just plain hated me. She made it apparent that it was illegal to find true love in the state of Virginia, and that Virginia was a state for virgins. <laughs> He's just referring to how he would like advertise at school that he wants a girlfriend on like a piece of paper. 
Uh, no blacks, of course. That's what that his words, not mine. All right. Uh, this is so stupid. He's so dumb. Yeah, he was very creepy about dating. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Not a lot of guys are, I guess, especially when you're horny. You know, very sex-driven creatures. So, unfortunato, you know. She still ticked me off of me, even after I apologized to her for portraying her the way I did in my books. She would did she know about it? I'm trying to remember. There's so much lore. Did she even know about the books, or did he just like come out and be like, "Hey, sorry about the way that I portrayed you like a bitch that died in the book." She's like, what are you talking about? Not That's my weird. apology, and she banned me from the grounds of Piedmont Virginia Community College. Oh no! That's a one help. Thank you for an apology or an apology accepted. Obviously, she did not accept my apology. I hope she gets fired. Period. Hey, Chris also invented cancel culture, guys. How do you like that? And I also hope that the Game and Hobby Place in Charlottesville burned to the ground, along with Michael Snyder. Oh my God, Chris, you gotta chill, brother. And that's all my ranting for right now. Okay. Well. The expensive mall of downtown Charlottesville houses a number of small businesses, as well as the show-stopping Pavilion Tent and the Paramount Theater. This as well as the Faction Square Shopping Center should both be social watering holes, but for me, sadly, they are not. Social watering holes? It's a very interesting language, Christopher. Anywhere herein, even including the bars and events like Fridays After Five, nobody will even look or say hello to me. And of course, the internet reputation I have against me, sadly, thanks to those gross people that have taken my information and strewed it around in their misconceptions of weirdness, twisting everything. I've already gone into how bad that has affected me and how emotionally scarred I have I been. That's I wonder, does he think, <clears throat> does he think that that's having like a really big impact on his personal life? Like I would imagine most people wouldn't really know about this. Like uh, job people would might know because they would Google it, but outside of those people, like do we do we actually think that they would know about it? You know what I mean? Like is that actually uh, an understand like thought and idea? You know. At the social life, the autism increases my shine. Or maybe he just it might also just have like completely like assassinated his confidence to a point where he thinks everybody knows like every like every bad thing, and now he's upset about it. You know. Yes. So I hardly have even the basic instinct to just say hello to anyone or even open up so easily with trust. Allow me to make it perfectly clear about who I am so that I am not misunderstood erroneously with the internet that's against me. My name Why is he using words that are like, to me, outside of his vocabulary? I don't know. Or he's trying to use words that are outside of most people's vocabulary. To me, like I feel like when you're trying to communicate with people, you should use very simple, like fairly simple language. Like I don't think it's an indicator of intelligence for like how amazing the the language you're using is. You know, like speak to your audience. You know what I mean, Chris? That's what I'm saying. Like people who are intentionally using words that like don't matter. They're, it's annoying because people are like, "What does that word mean?" Like, "Oh, you don't know what that word means." It's like this weird kind of like subtle. I don't think that Chris is going this far. I think that he just found he probably just reads the dictionary because he's lonely. I don't know, but. Some people do that, and I just find it to be like oh, so fucking unbearable, you know? My name is Christian West of Chandler, high functioning autistic artist. I am kind, caring, empathetic. Kind, uh, ugly. <laughs> Got him. Emotional. A good friend. A loyal friend. How do you know that you're a good friend, Chris? I'm sorry, I'm being mean, but like, how do you know? Like, you, know, you, you don't really have any friends, you know? Like, I know it's, it's terrible and sad and mean, but how do you know you're a good friend, you know what I mean? Well, I know it's fucked up. And cautious and weary. Trustworthy. Mostly honest. I do not like to lie. Mostly I would only honest. lie to protect the other person's feelings of care and respect. He probably would lie to get in some pussy too, which is a very which is a very male thing to do. It's a very man thing to do, you know. <laughs> I am not a monster! I am a caring, emotional, feeling heterosexual human being oh. and I should be treated equally and respected as such okay. at least I do have one friend who cares about me around here unfortunately she refuses to go beyond just friends but I care about her just the same anyway oh. Oh. because that's the kind of guy I am 
what a what a nice guy. He's like, oh, they have a friend, and she doesn't want to be my my girlfriend, but I'm a nice guy, so I'll still hang out with her. What the fuck? What are you talking about, bro? What an arrogant thing. friend that? Mick shows up to inform him that she has a friend that she would like to introduce to him. The oh. subtitles depict their conversation. Really? Oh, okay. This is part of the the lore in the universe. I was like, oh, did somebody actually show up and say that? No, 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 no. It's part of his uh, universe lore. So somebody, uh, that's it. I thought that I, was, I thought that like Chris was actually getting a chance at a girlfriend. In the next part, Mick introduces Christian to Nanette, who is described by him as a pretty woman. Okay. No more. No more. Uh, he's not narrating anymore, huh? It's unfortunate. Now understand. This is what I'm talking about for us autistic people. We are too shy by default. But on earning our trust, or if we feel comfortable or like the other person on our individual instincts, we will open up. And to start us right, we need either A, the other person to approach and talk to us upon their own will, or B, have our own trusted friend or family introduce us to other people of our respective ages. In this scenario, it was a great match for me for A, she is a single woman without a boyfriend. Okay. B, she is pretty and easy on my eyes. And C, those two things mean the same thing. In fact, you've been double speaking the whole time. A single person without a boyfriend means the same thing. Same thing, double. The same thing is they're pretty easy on the eyes. So, um, this woman I could feel comfortable with. How much is this game? I think it's like three dollars. I think it's called Vampire Come or something. Vampire Survivor or something like that. It's pretty good. It's actually not too bad. I've been enjoying it. I saw it on TikTok. I was like, "Oh, this looks kind of cool." It's like a, it's a very simple, like roguelike game. I'm playing it now. Uh, it's pretty like mind numbing. Like I don't have to. <laughs> that sounds weird, but I don't have to pay like a whole lot of attention to it. So I'm like enjoying it. Um, somehow it takes like le like it's more. I don't know. For me, it's like more muscle memory, I guess. Whereas like balloons, I feel like I have to think sometimes and focus. I don't know. It sounds so weird because you think balloons would be like easier. I guess it is to a different. It's just a different way. But and feel a good and honest aura from her. Obviously, I'm still playing from balloons, but a good friendship and hopefully. A, a long relationship will stay between us for the long time. Oh. Do not bring me down here, naysayers and haters. Let's look at a few other scenarios similar to opposite results. Obviously, most women, easy on my eyes, good humored, sweet, pretty, black, white, Asian, Christian, Jewish, Buddhism. I have no, cause I have no care about skin color or religion. What well, that's an, that's new. Chris doesn't care about skin color or religion. That's new, bro. And you want to know why that's new? Because Chris. Is at the I'll I'll do I'll do anything for pussy phase. All right, he doesn't care anymore. He's changed his uh, he's changed his <laughs> he he's changed his um whatever the fuck it's called. He's he's changed his preferences to to match you know beggars can't be choosers. Am I right? Okay, beggars can't be choosers. Papa, would you do a podcast with Gino Samuel? That'd be cool. I would I would have a conversation with him. That'd be nice. Ever. I will be kind to all of them, respectful and welcoming them, to have them in my circle of friends. Lesbians too. Just don't get on my bad side here. Don't get on my bad side. Stop, Chris. You're insane. Men, my own kind, on the other hand, I will feel most hesitant towards because I have had fewer male friends in my life and I have had mostly bad experiences around them. Yeah, you want to know what though? That's probably because of the way that men have, have friends. So I just want you guys to know that the way that men engage in friendships is a little, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I, I think it's different from women in the sense that like men bully other men <laughs> in friendships. You know, they bully the, the shit out of them. Um, usually in like a social circle, there's like, uh, there's that one friend that, um, or maybe multiple, but there's like that one friend that you just kind of like bully the shit out of. And you, it's fun. It's usually in good in good practice, though. I don't know if that would happen with Chris. Um, but you like make fun of them. I had somebody in a friend group that was like that. He was, listen, he's a great guy. We made fun of him. We messed around with him a little bit. You know, it was, it was we had a good time. And uh, I know it's mean because it was like at his expense. But, you know, that's life, I guess. I <laughs> if the uh, individual, however offers a uh, friendly gesture and does not make me angry or make me feel most uncomfortable okay. or ill at ease 
I will be willing to give him a chance and welcome him as a friend and oh. nothing more. Nothing more. However, going back to the mean people of the internet. Yep, Pud. How do you, you remember you remember Pud? Oh, it was Pud. Oh, you are correct. Upon meeting one of them in real life, and I will be able to recognize them, I'm sure enough, at least with basic instincts, I will not hold back my endured rage. Just ask this crying Clyde. Of course, his character then proceeds to beat up a caricature of a masked Clyde Cash. Does he think that Clyde Cash is a meme? Like, an actual meme? Like, is that why he's... Like, does he think that's what he's actual... I thought Clyde Cash... Didn't Clyde Cash have the picture of the Italian-looking fellow? Physically and mentally challenged individuals will vary more. Good results upon if they are easy to look at, if they are able to speak clearly, even slowly, that I can easily understand them. And now uh, the other part, the other side, whoa, back off. I'm spooked if you are ugly, seriously disfigured, especially in the face that you... <laughs> Chris, how are you going to be this mean, bro? I'm seriously spooked if you're ugly or seriously disfigured. Come on, man. You got to be a little more accepting than that, brother. You you really cannot be choosy. You really, you can't. What are you doing? Why do your friends need to be attractive? You know what I mean? Like, my friends aren't attractive. Like, who cares? Like, why are you dating people? Why are you friends with people for attractiveness? I mean, the, the answer is rather obvious. It's not really it's not necessarily trying to date. I mean, it's more of trying to get some of that poo who nanny if you know what i'm saying mumble more than you speak you're hard to understand at all it is nothing personal and i apologize for anyone who feels at unease after hearing what i just said but it's just the way i feel that's all fair enough chris fair enough another thing about us autistic people we do not like to be alone quote unquote 24 7. we need the emotional support of a true friend constantly and in person also, on another note, apparently government funding goes more towards physical health over mental health. Wow. The brain is a part of our body, and not just any part, the most vital part. Wow. Why do we treat the rest of our body parts, which essentially alone are brainless, better than our one actual central processing unit that is not brainless? Wow. This is really deep. As a part of the body, funds should be equally distributed or equally divided between both physical and mental health. So then the cures okay. for mental illnesses, including autism, can be found. Well, I, I don't know what to it say. It just sure. makes me feel sad and furious at this time. I, for one, right. actually appreciate a true and full good quality friendship. Yet, in a world full of sick-minded people, one can only detest, I feel so paranoid, of a number of people. And I feel uncertain of most anyone I could ever trust. And, or feel at ease around. Well, wow. the social phobias I can no longer tolerate, which is why, unlike the autistic people who pitifully accept it as a forever lasting curse, I for one seek a cure. On the day, a resolution to reestablishing all connections in our brains with thorough corpus callosum repair and such, I, Christian Weston Chandler, will be there among the first in line to take the life-changing autism cure I have desired for so long to establish a quicker, <laughs> more socially active wow. mind. Imagine they actually had a, a an autism cure. Of self a great you know what's so interesting? I remember I made a video about, uh, from like, like Elon Musk talked about a potential cure to autism, for lack of a better term. And I talked about it. Um, I was like, yeah, this would be interesting. I don't think that you should be forced to take it, of course. Um, but I think it would be good because a lot of people I think with autism wouldn't want to don't like want to have autism and uh, it's upsetting to them and I was like yeah I think um, I think it would be a really good option and available and then so many people that didn't have autism melted down over what I said saying that I'm like I'm a piece of shit um, I was like why why am I a piece of shit like if somebody didn't like you know what I mean like it doesn't make any sense people are just like really love fucking melting the fuck down it's just crazy it's fucking nuts um sense of self-reliance we're not a cover of teachers pay I don't know like they don't pay, pay a lot what's the cover 
A great sense of self-confidence. Fucking Jesus Christ, babe. Mm, I, you you. I know I've been trying to get your attention. I just want to say hello. Hello. I'll get off after the segment. Jesus fuck. I'm gonna kill her. And freedom from the thorns of autism of any kind or sort. I just got autism. That's how scared I got. <laughs> that scared the fuck out of me, bro. Jesus Christ. Just walked up on me. The life only an autistic person can ever dream of. I am Christian Weston Chandler, and this has been an autism tutorial. Thank you, and have a good and safe day. Thanks, Chris. His autism tutorial was followed by a special bonus animation made in the same vein. And now, ladies and gentlemen, because apparently you decide you want to watch this part after watching the autism tutorial, we have a special guest. It's a concept that they shouldn't have to be, you know, they shouldn't have to be cured, but like some people would want to be cured. Like, so that's the thing. Like, or I guess cured isn't the right word, but some people would just like rather not have it. Like, I don't think it's a big deal if people would make that choice because it's very distressing living with autism. So that's for you today. Please put your hands together for a reasonable way facsimile of Mr. Hans Asperger. Song is a banger. I am your host, Christian Chandler, on this short talk show. And this is Mr. Hans Asperger. Now, let's talk about him for a bit. So, is I'm assuming, it's kind of cool, but that's part of the technology to, like, um... It's part of the technology to be able to like speak and like a response to your voice. That's kind of cool with the whole little big planet thing. I guess you're speaking into some kind of a PlayStation mic. It's pretty pop. It's pretty pooger if you if you ask me. Now, apparently, Mr. Hans Asperger from the Vienna University Hospital in 1938. Oh, how recent. You gave a lecture in Germany on autistic psychopaths after investigating a mild form of autism. Isn't that right, Hans? Yeah. And also, apparently, this separate yeah. diagnosis, as it is quoted, was not recognized until 1981, only one year before I was born. Oh. Although coined from your name, Mr. Asperger, apparently a Mr. Leo Kenner... Mr. Asperger? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's ...took the study much further and established the term early infantile autism. Do you applaud Mr. Kenner for his work? Yeah. I see. Now, this is so stupid. in my feeling alone, possibly mutual with others, the name Asperger, it strikes me badly, and I feel offended just by hearing the word. Do you feel I have the right to my own opinions and feelings as an individual? Well, you do have your, of course, have the right to those feelings. But what I will say, Asperger? It's like naming your kid Ophelia. You name a whole, a whole, uh, ish, like a whole disability Asperger? Like, for obvious Asperger's or like Ophelia. You may imagine name your kid Ophelia. Oh, Ophelia pussy. <laughs> like that's that's the meme. You understand? You can't do that. It's child abuse. Individual person, Hans? Yeah. Thank you very much, good sir. Do you feel bad about having a name that sounds like a bad cut of cow meat? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Do you feel that I, Christian Winston Chandler, do not deserve any blame or punishment for having an opinion of a single word such as Asperger. Yeah. Do you have a general understanding about how I feel? About okay, so now that we've explored the whole Asperger controversy, is Chris's entire issue with it? It sounds silly. Ja. I, I, is that is that Chris's whole like hold up with it? That's it's very interesting. <laughs> you now? Yeah. Stop having him do it. I'm fucking kill him. Are you positive you really understand how I feel about you, Mr. Hans Asperger? What is this? Yeah. 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 What the fuck is happening right now? I feel disliked towards you. We're selfishly putting your ill. What the fuck? Yeah. This is like a Tim and Eric sketch. What the hell? You call him Baka? Baka. I feel disliked towards. He called him Baka, like sussy Baka. Wow, he invented that word. 
And I'm well aware that it's a, it's a I think it's Asia, it's some kind of like a Japanese or something. But either way, Christian invented Baca. You for selfishly putting your ill name in association with autism. Well, yeah. And with a name like Asperger, I feel it only makes us autistic kinds sound even worse. Okay. Asperger's. You should have left it as it was. Autism is autism. And in your research, you linked it up with psychopaths. I feel even more offended at that. Now get out of my sight. Yeah. Yeah. I apologize if I came off as bad to anybody. Made them feel. It's so interesting though because originally he was against the because the, uh, Ob Obama Obama, I believe he made it so that um, it was just autism spectrum autism spectrum disorder instead of like as like instead of individual like you know issues or whatever or. Uh, Forms of autism, and I believe he did that to make it easier to like bill insurance companies for uh, you know when kids had if kids had got autism or something, <clears throat> which makes sense. But now I so you could have swore that Chris was like for um, I could have swore that Chris was like for or he was against the coupling of those two for a lot for lack of a better term. Yeah, I could have swore that. But now it seems that that's not the case. So I'm a little confused. I'm a little confuzzled, if, if you, you know, a little con, a little sussed out, if you will, you know. But okay. Bad for the way I acted, but then again, I do get emotional and carried away sometimes. Thank you for watching. Cha. And have a good, safe, and blessed day. The, the level's complete. On February 25th, Jackie sent Chris an email wishing him a happy birthday and inquiring how he was getting along. He sent her a reply a little over a month later in which he reveals a revelation about his identity. Whereas a tomboy, who was a girl who possessed male features, fashion sense, and demeanor, Chris dubbed himself a tom girl, a man with girl-like sensibilities. Whether or not this reimagined look and sense of self were entirely of his own choosing and without troublesome influences is uncertain. In a nutshell, I have grown my hair out. That is a, a question. <clears throat> I wonder what it is. I mean, if we're not missing any context in this story. Okay, I don't know because he's constantly being like relentlessly bullied. So for all we really do know, there's a lot of context missing here um, that we would we would desperately need. What I will say, though, <clears throat> is if we have all the context, it is possible that Chris, there's so many different possibilities here. Um, possibility number one is that Chris's homophobia stems from him being what he would perceive as gay in, in some capacity. Um, and so it's like this disliking of himself almost. That's a possibility. It's also possible that he's misdiagnosing himself, or maybe it's possible that he likes being more feminine. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Uh, he just enjoys being more feminine to connect more to women that won't date him maybe. I don't know. And I said misdiagnosed because what if Chris isn't trans, but it's like some kind of misdiagnosis of having like a fundamental issue with your body and feeling uh, like the solution, I guess, for lack of a better term, is to identify as trans. Does that make sense? Maybe I'm overthinking it. I don't know. And continuing to let it grow, I've learned the best term to describe me. Tom girl, colon close parentheses. Yes, ja. I am a tom girl and I'm damn proud of it. I have embraced and appreciated my feminine side. I am still totally heterosexual. Otherwise, I would be... Because I don't know, man. I just, I don't know. Like, usually when people are trans, like, the, the behaviors manifest much earlier. And from what we've seen, I don't think that I've seen anything that, to me, would indicate that Chris is actually, like, trans, which I know sounds weird. Um, But it seems more like... It's, you know what I mean? Like, nothing really indicates that to me so much. Oh, incredible. Hold on. Um, so I'm a little bit skeptical, you know, about it. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, like we said, because we're not quite Be there. a full-blown you-know-what. I also have had my ears pierced with amethyst studs, my birthstone, recently. I've been more self-confident, and I have a sweet sachet walk, hair, and wing flirts, and I'm greeting women left and right. Hello, semicolon, close parentheses. Also, here's another way to consider me. I am a Ken doll, and a Barbie can dress in her clothes, and I would feel most comfortable in them and to model them for her. Come shopping with me, sweetie. Semicolon close parentheses. 
He sent her a small collection of photos of his new look, which he had only shared with one other party, Linnea, a gal pal portrayed by Kim Wilson. Jackie finally sent a reply to Chris on April 18th, in which she confessed that she got aroused by his photos, and that she also shared them with another friend of hers. Chris was bothered that his pictures were Ooh. But since he didn't find them on the quickie, he felt that it was to a friend of hers, April 18th, in Sorry. which he confessed that she got aroused by his photos, and that she also shared them with another friend of hers. Chris was bothered that his pictures were being shared, but since he didn't find them on the quickie, he felt that it was still fine. Mm. They further continued communications, with Jackie revealing that she was no longer with Lars, and would possibly- What kind of pictures were they? Were they like risque in some capacity? Why would he be offended? I guess just fundamentally because he's got fucking PTSD. Uh -huh. Maybe. They'd be interested in meeting up with Christian if given enough time. Chris then told her that his mother was quite unsupportive of his tomgirl ways for the first few weeks, but then settled into this new fact. Barbara became bothered again when Chris started putting on makeup, with her fearing that he was turning into a homosexual or a transvestite. She also remarked that she thought it made him look like a prostitute. Chris sure further does. shared with Jackie that his father was recovering from colon cancer surgery, and that he was putting a strain on Barbara due to his constant argument starting. Barbara also quote-unquote got some monkeys off her back while confiding in Chris during this stressful time. She brought up the final day of Christian and Bob moving back to Rutgersville from Chesterfield County in 2000. That night, she offered them a spaghetti dinner, which they both declined. Angered by the situation, she refused to cook for them from that point onward. Chris then told Jackie that the following month, he was planning to get himself a belly button piercing and a tattoo on his lower back, which would- What- what is- what's the motivation for this? What made him this way? I feel- I just- this seems so random. This seems too random to me. Nothing is indicating this direction being pushed into at all. This just seems so random. This doesn't make any sense to me. It just doesn't. Like, it's such a shift. The only thing that would slightly indicate this is the fact that... Um, the only thing that would slightly indicate this is the fact that Chris was wearing a bra for a while, which he might associate with being a girl. But I feel like there's there's just not a there's something going on here. We're, we're, there's something missing. We're missing some kind of um we're missing a lot here, I feel. I don't know. I just it's not sitting right with me, you know? We're missing something. There had to be some kind of like social engineering here. There has to be. I just don't believe otherwise. I really don't. Would consist of planetary symbols and the phrase, Tom Girl Forever. Nice. Toward the end of April, the PlayStation Network was hacked and personal information of users was compromised. On April 30th, Chris discovered all of the Tom Girl photos that he had shared with Jackie and his online gal pal Dana on the quickie. He wrote emails to both Dana and Jackie, doubting their legitimacy as true and honest friends. He announced that he would no longer share photos with Jackie until she earned his trust. Jackie responded angrily, upset that he would call her a liar when he himself had lied to her so many times. She also suggested that perhaps the photos he shared with Dana via the PSN were saved onto Sony servers, and that was how the trolls got a hold of them. After two days, Christian formulated a reply, apologizing for accusing her of being in league with the trolls. Oh he clarified that the photos being made public was devastating to him because now trolls knew of his new appearance, and worried that he might become a target of real-life trolling once again. Mm. On May 5th, Chris hand wrote an eight-page letter to Sony concerning the PSN hacking. He also typed it out and sent it via email to both Dana and Jackie. In it, he stated his full name and town of residence, and requested that Sony and the FBI track down the real identities of all the trolls who have been bothering him since November of 2007 while investigating the hacking. He added that he was the creator of Sonichu and had hand-drawn the online comic book series of his adventures, but along the way, trolls became aware of his presence and thoroughly spoiled his comics. He clarified that despite what some people may say online, he was in fact heterosexual. He admitted that he was partly at fault because in his past immaturity, he used to continuously respond to trolls, quote-unquote, egging them on. In closing, Chris denied that Sony were responsible for the hacking, and that these trolls, cyber bullies, and hackers should bear the full brunt of this incident and be sued. Throughout the month of May, Jackie and Chris continued their email discussion on a near-daily basis, with topics ranging from spending habits and financial troubles to the interpersonal relationships between Christian and his parents. He theorized that he wasn't hired by Walmart or McDonald's because of his background check, which would have revealed unwanted information about himself on the quickie. In addition, Jackie created some original pony characters inspired by the cartoon and merchandise series My Little Pony so that he might feature them in his comics. Chris declined the offer, stating that ponies did not belong to the universe of Sonichu and Rosechu. Two days later, Wait, he revealed- Christian, Christian denied My Little Pony? That seems interesting to me, because I, I feel like My Little Pony is 
synonymous, no offense to people with autism. I'm just saying, I mean, I just feel like there's a lot of people with autism identifying with it. Okay. I'm just saying seems to be a lot of people. All right. No offense. Feared that Barbara had gotten upset with him again because of his Tom girlish ways and feared that he might kill her. In her emotional rage, she threatened to kill him. After a short while, she called Chris downstairs and forcefully cut off two inches of his hair. In his shock. Whoa, what the fuck? Okay, well, interesting. He called her a bitch, and upon realizing that that hair. made him a son of a bitch, it hurt him even more. He gathered up clumps of his All hair right, and fashioned like a charm necklace out of it to promote faster hair regeneration. He also got himself a wig, which he wore out in public. During this time, Christian continued to further embrace his femininity, singing songs such as Teenage Dream by Katy Perry on karaoke nights and buying women's clothing. He confessed to his online gal pal that he was feeling uncomfortable using the men's bathroom while dressed up in his typical feminine garb, and asked her if it would be out of line for him to use the ladies' bathroom instead, stating that he would have no issue if a tomboy decided to use the facilities for men. While Chris's coming out as a tom girl may have come as a shocking surprise to many observers, the signs were obvious to those who watched him the closest. Many theorized that his curious case of homophobia was due to his own repressed desires, stifled by his conservative household, and for those who wished to delve deep into his past, Chris's future changes in identity should come as no surprise at all. I don't... I don't know what to say, because I still think that it came out of absolutely nowhere. Like, there's nothing to... There's, there's nothing that suggests to me at all that, like, this is... some. This just doesn't... It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't, dude. None of that makes any sense. Like, I, I, it does, like, I, okay, I understand. Like, as I, I even brought up before, I'm like, yeah, maybe it's like the reason he has so much hatred for gay people, um, is some kind of like a, uh, as like a cope, right? I said that before. And I mean that it's possible, but it just feels like, I mean, it just feels like there still were no other signs. I don't think I ever saw a moment where he was like impressed. I mean, I don't know. And then there's a difference between it being him being gay and trans. It's not like he's like, oop, I'm actually gay. It's like this motherfucker is now becoming like trans. It just happens so quickly and it just feels so unnatural that I don't, I just, there has to be some kind of an external influence. It just has to be. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and another special shout out to all my Patreon and Twitch subs. If you'd like to support this channel further than you already have by just watching the video alone, go down to the links below where you can sub on my Patreon, which will allow you to get your name on this beautiful black wall. <laughs> uh, or you can go to the Twitch page and you can actually use a free Amazon Prime sub, if you have Amazon Prime, to subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.